Unit 9. That's Entertainment. Pupils Book, page 144. Activity 1. Read about some performers, films and books from the world of entertainment. Guess the name of each one. Then listen carefully to check. 1. The first three films in this film series, Twilight, made almost 1.5 billion euros at the box office and more than 330 million euros in DVD sales. The fourth film in this series was sold out in cinemas before it was even released. 2. Justin Bieber, a young singer-songwriter, has won many awards including Artist of the Year and Best New Artist. He's got more than 25 million followers on Twitter and has sold more than 15 million albums. 3. The Harry Potter series has sold 450 million copies, making it the best-selling book series in history. It has now been translated into 67 languages. The last four books in this series have set records as the fastest-selling books ever. 4. Adele's second album alone has earned her seven Grammy Awards, two Brit Awards, three American Music Awards and at least 14 other awards. She has sold more than 26 million albums and has written and sung an original song for Skyfall, the 23rd James Bond film. 5. Taylor Lautner was recently named the highest paid teenage actor in Hollywood. He has appeared in many TV shows and films, but is best known for his role as Jacob Black. Pupils Book, page 145. Activity 2. Listen. Copy the diary into your notebook and complete it with the things that Becky has planned to do. Use names of events from the box. Then match the events to the pictures below. Next year is going to be so cool. I can't wait. You've already planned next year. What are you going to do? Well, there's something for every month. January the 4th's my birthday, so I'm going to an Adele concert. Cool. I love Adele. 21 is my favourite album. Mine too. Then in February, my favourite author is having a book signing. Who? Noah Carter. Of course. Can I come too? Of course. Let's try to get some photos too. What about March? In March, there's the comic book exhibition, which I'm definitely going to. Do you want to come? Yeah, absolutely. I want to go to the Marvel Comics table and see what's new. April is my official stargazing month. Stargazing? Yes. I'm going to see how many celebs I can spot. To get started, I'm going to the premiere of the next James Bond film in Leicester Square. That's going to be crazy. You'll have to get there early to get a good seat. I know. Then, last of all, May is the month of music festivals. There's the Brit Pop music one, the grass in the park. I'm definitely going to that. I won free tickets with VIP passes to go backstage. Tickets? You don't mean more than one of them, do you? Yeah, two tickets. They just came today. Do you want to go with me? Oh, are you joking? I'd love to. Pupils Book, pages 146 and 147. Activity 4. Listen and read. Which reviewer hopes Stan Lee's third album will be better than his second? Customer Reviews. You know it. Five stars. 139 reviews 4 stars 82 reviews 3 stars 17 reviews 2 stars 2 reviews
One star. Seven reviews. Display reviews by most helpful. Five stars. Love it, love it, love it. By Little Kitty. I really liked Stanley's first album, but I didn't know what to expect with the second one. My best friend said this album was even better than the first one, and he was so right. There's a rumour that it's going to be nominated for the Best Album Award. How cool is that? Five stars. This was so worth the wait. By Music Lover 2003. I am a huge Stanley fan. I have been waiting for this album for so long, and it's finally here. My friends and I bought it as soon as it came out. I'm going to a concert of his next week. I can't wait. Four stars. Not as good as the first one, but still really good. By JJ Keyboards. Scott's first album was pretty good. Everybody could see that this guy had a lot of talent, but then the recording company started to control Scott and his music. The sound in the new album isn't as good as it was in the first. I still like Scott's music a lot, so I bought the new album. But I'm hoping that he'll go back to his old sound when he makes his third album. Two stars. Not bad, but a little disappointing. By Starfan. I bought Stanley Scott's first album and I really liked it. My friend told me that Stanley had been working with my favourite singer, Sasha Littleton, so I thought maybe the music in this album would be different from the first one. Well, it's okay, but I was a little disappointed. I'm still going to see him at Fairlock Festival next month and hope he'll play most of his old songs. One Star, Awful, by Music for Life I think this kid has got some talent, but this is not music. It's the product of a big recording company. It's their sound, not Stanley Scott's. The lyrics, the music, everything is so boring. I'm not going to buy his next one if it's like this. There's no creativity in this album at all. Even kids like me know the difference between real music and stuff like this. Activity book, page 122. Activity 4. Read and listen. Then read the statements and circle the correct names. Customer reviews. Bubble Sky. Five stars. 410 reviews. Four stars. 60 reviews. Three stars. 12 reviews. Two stars. Zero reviews. One star. One review. Display reviews by most helpful. Jennifer rated it five stars. I love manga, but I don't usually read comedy manga. They seem so silly to me. Not Bubble Sky. The characters are hilarious and their adventures are like a puzzle. Fun to work out. The main character, Seraphine Bubble, is always on the lookout for an adventure. Get this book. You won't regret it. Nikki rated it one star. All my friends love this book, but I couldn't even finish it. Seraphim is boring. I don't like science much, so I didn't find her solutions interesting. The only funny character is Pun Bun, Seraphim's pet bunny. The rest of the characters are dull. Full stop. Tim rated it four stars. I agree with Jennifer that Bubble Sky is fun to read because of the characters. Another reviewer said that Seraphim was boring. But I really think it's clever how Seraphim always gets everyone out of trouble using cool science ideas that no one else knows about. But I gave it four stars because sometimes the plot was predictable.
Pupils Book, page 148, Activity 6. Listen and read. What did Darren's mum say? What are you doing? I'm counting the money that I've saved up from my pocket money. Here, let me help. So, what are you going to spend this on? I want to go to the comic book exhibition. Hannah's dad is taking her, and mum said that I could go with them. But I've got to buy the ticket myself. Why do you want to spend all your money on that? Because I love comic books. And I've never been to a comic book exhibition before. Laura said she was going too, so there will be three of you there. Great! It's going to be brilliant. There's an art competition and I'm entering my comic book. Good idea. You're great at drawing. Pupils Book, page 148. Activity 8. Listen and match. Then complete the sentences using the correct words from the box. 1. Have you seen this? What is it? It's a review of the new BMX racing video game, Time to Fly. What does it say? Well, this reviewer said the animation was stunning and it feels just like the real world, like you're riding a BMX. Yeah, well, I read a review of this old one. That one said that it was exciting and challenging, and guess what? It wasn't. It was really boring and too easy to work out. Not challenging at all. Well, this reviewer said the same thing about the old one. So, I think we can trust what he says. 2. Mum, um, could I possibly borrow £10? What for? I want to go and see all the celebrities at the film premiere with my friends, but I haven't got enough money for the train. What happened to your pocket money? I spent it to go to that concert last week. It was more expensive than I thought. Well, I suppose I could give you next week's pocket money in advance, but that means you won't get anything next week. OK, deal. What film is it? It's the new Spider-Man film. Oh, I've heard it's great. Yeah, Luke said it was really good. Well, have fun. Thanks, Mum. 3. I'm thinking about getting the new Stanley Scott CD. Have you heard anything about it? Yes. I went online and read some of the reviews. What did people say about it? Well, one girl said that the new release was his best album yet. A boy said that it wasn't as good as his last album, but still impressive. Great. Thanks. I'm definitely going to get it then. 4. What kind of films do you like? Oh, I like all kinds of films, but I think my favourite ones are action films. Really? Like what? Well, I love all the Daniel Duke films. They're great. Did you know Daniel Duke's biography is out? His biography? I didn't know there was one. Have you read it yet? No, not yet. But one of my friends has read it already, and she said it was fantastic. I'd like to get it. I'm going to his book signing next week. You should come with me and get a copy of it. Will Daniel Duke be there or the author? Oh, I guess just the author. But still, he knows Daniel Duke, so he's got to be cool. Activity book, page 123. Activity 6. Listen and read. Then answer the questions. Mum... Um, could I possibly borrow £10? What for? I want to go and see all the celebrities at the film premiere of Spider-Man. All my friends are going, but I haven't got enough money for the train. What happened to your pocket money? I spent it on going to that concert last week. It was more expensive than I thought. Well, I suppose I could give you next week's pocket money in advance. But that means you won't get anything next week. OK. Deal. Thanks, Mum.
Activity Book, page 123. Activity 8. Complete the dialogue with the underlined expressions in 6. Listen and check your answers. Do you want to stop at the shopping centre on the way home? What for? I need some things for my science project. OK, but only if we go to the pizza place in there first. I'm so hungry. OK, deal. Pupils book, page 150. Activity 12. Listen and read. How did Tetris become popular? The History of Video Games Have you ever heard of Pong, Pac-Man or Game Boy? Believe it or not, these things were once as popular as Nintendo and PlayStation. Just 50 years ago, video games were very different. They were simply interactive computer programs with an electronic display. They weren't even intended for entertainment. They were just experiments in artificial intelligence. Nevertheless, a number of different video games were invented in the USA between 1950 and 1970. William Higginbotham, a physicist, invented a game called Tennis for Two in 1958. It was popular and people could play it in a computer laboratory, but it was never sold in shops. Then, in 1962, students at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, created Space War. It was still too expensive to run on a home computer, but it was sent to university laboratories all over the USA, inspiring students to develop other computer games. In 1972, an arcade table tennis game called Pong was invented. It was very popular, and many people wanted to play it in their living rooms, but it was still too big and expensive. They had to wait three years for a home version. Then, in 1978, the Japanese company Nintendo invented Space Invaders. People could play it in machines that worked with coins. Space Invaders was the first ever video game to track and display high scores, and its popularity in Japan caused a national shortage of coins. Later, game developers developed multiplayer games, allowing people to compete at home. At last, people could use games consoles and play games on TV. In 1989, Game Boy arrived in shops. This black-and-white Japanese video game player became popular with the puzzle game Tetris. People all over the world were now playing games at home. The computer gaming industry was changing by the day, and more and more money was being spent on high-technology, realistic games. By 2004, people were using the Wii. It was a big hit because people could play with their whole body. Games developers were looking for ways to get gamers out of their chairs, and the Wii was their answer. In just 50 years, video games have reached an amazing quality. If games can change this much in such a short time, what will happen next? Activity Book, page 126. Activity 13. Listen and read. Why are today's video games better? Video games. The year 2000 and now. Have you ever asked your parents what computer and video games they played when they were younger? Perhaps they played Pac-Man or Donkey Kong. Maybe they had a Game Boy at home and enjoyed playing Tetris on it. The changes to the computer and video games industry since your parents were young have been incredible. Even since the year 2000, new technology has changed how, where and what people play, 
as well as who they play with. We've got many more choices now than we used to. How people play and who they play with. In the year 2000, people played on games consoles, desktop computers, or in arcades. When they wanted to play with others, they invited them over to their houses or they played alone. Some online games were available at the end of the 1990s, but they were expensive and not as many people had access to the internet. Today, people can play games anywhere they want on portable gaming devices, phones or tablets. They can play online with friends or even with other players from around the world. What people play Games today have got graphics that are sharper and more lifelike than they used to be and new technology has made games more challenging, with more variety. Since 2000, massively multiplayer online games MMOs, have become popular. People like to compete against each other for higher scores. They love virtual worlds that offer experiences they could never have in real life. Dancing and exercise games, as well as sports and adventure games, have also become popular. This trend towards more choices and deeper involvement in virtual worlds will continue to change video games well into the future. Who knows what video games will be available when you are an adult? The children of the future will probably think that the games you play today are very old-fashioned. Pupils Book, page 152. Activity 18. Listen and read. What's Grandma's best friend called? When did she meet her? Grandma? What was your first day at school like? How did you feel? School? I was a bit frightened of the big school, but I didn't want to show it. My mum told me to be good, and my dad told me not to talk in lessons. What about your brother? Did he give you any advice? Yes, he did. He told me not to eat sweets at school. Was your teacher strict? Yes, she was. She told us to be quiet and listen to her or she'd tell the headmaster. Did you make any friends on your first day? I did. A girl called Amy asked me to play hopscotch with her at break. And did you? Yes, I did. That was 60 years ago. And Amy and I are still friends, and we still play hopscotch when nobody's watching. Pupils Book, pages 154 and 155. Activity 27. Listen and read, then say true or false. Unique Musical Instruments Music is as old as mankind. It's a form of communication, and just like language, many instruments are unique to a specific culture or area. This article takes a look at just a few of the instruments that we associate with different countries and their history. Bagpipes are very old, although we don't know exactly how old, because they aren't built to last a long time. Bagpipes consist of a bag, which was traditionally made of sheep's stomach, and pipes. Most people think of Scotland when they think of bagpipes, but bagpipes are also used traditionally in other parts of Europe. The sitar is a stringed instrument used in classical Indian music. It's common in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. It was probably developed from a similar Persian instrument in about the 18th century. A sitar looks quite similar to a guitar, but its sound is very different. 
It makes Indian styles of music very distinctive. The steel drums were first used in the 1700s. These drums were originally created out of oil drums to celebrate carnival in Trinidad and Tobago, but their popularity is growing around the world. The steel is bent to create a distinctive sound and a number of different notes. Many musicians play six to eight drums at a time. The alpine horn is associated with herdsmen, especially people living in mountainous regions. Originally, Swiss farmers used alpine horns to communicate with each other across the mountains. But historians believe the horn was also used as many as 2,000 years ago by Celtic people. Most alpine horns, also called alp horns, are carved out of spruce wood and they've got a mellow, echoey sound. Some famous composers, such as Mozart and Bach, also wrote music for this instrument. The bandonian is a type of concertina. Although it was invented in Germany in 1846 to play church music, it has become the symbol of Argentine tango. Astor Piazzolla, the famous Argentine composer and musician, made the instrument world famous in the 20th century with his tango compositions. The instrument itself is extremely complex and difficult to play, as each button makes a different note when played pushing in and pushing out. These are just some of the unusual instruments that are part of different cultures. Which instruments is your country famous for? Activity book, page 130. Activity 22. Read and complete with the words in the box. Then listen and check. Unique musical instruments. Every culture has got musical instruments that are unique to it. The instruments are often made from a variety of materials, such as wood, steel, animal bones and plastic. Many people are proud of the musical instruments that are associated with their cultures. Often these instruments make distinctive sounds too, like no other sound that you've heard before. In Vienna, there's an orchestra that's really unique because it plays instruments from the things your mother tells you to eat every day. The Vienna Vegetable Orchestra plays instruments made out of vegetables. Can you imagine the unique sounds they make? The 11 musicians in the Vienna Vegetable Orchestra play carrot flutes, radish horns, pepper rattlers, carrot trumpets, aubergine clappers, pumpkin bongos and cucumber phones. The orchestra plays contemporary, jazz and electronic music, among other styles. They play concerts around the world. At the end of their concerts, the members of the audience receive a bowl of vegetable soup to enjoy. So, not only do you get to hear unusual music, but you get to taste something delicious too. The third album of the Vienna Vegetable Orchestra is called Onion Noise and includes songs entitled Nightshades and Transplants. Can you think of any other suitable titles for their compositions? Why did this group of visual artists, poets, designers and writers choose vegetables to create music? They were fascinated by the challenge to produce musical sounds using natural foods. They constantly experiment with vegetables to create new and complex sounds. As part of their work, they run workshops on how to create instruments from vegetables. A morning TV program said it was a highly unusual, tasty performance. You knew vegetables were good for you, now you know that they sound good too. What's your favourite vegetable? Can you think of a musical instrument that you could make out of it?
Pupils Book, page 158. Activity 34. Listen, read and repeat. 1. Jin. 2. Shun. 3. Asian. Pupils Book, page 158. Activity 35. Listen and blend the sounds. 1. T, E, E, O, E, V, E, J, N. Television. 2. F, E, K, S, N. Fiction. 3. S, E, O, E. Asian Celebration Four D E S E J N Decision Five O P S I N Option Six E N V E Asian Invitation Pupils Book, page 158 Activity 36 Listen and chant I've got an invitation to a birthday celebration We'll watch science fiction films on television Now that's a good decision Checkpoint Unit 7 to 9 Pupils Book, page 161 Activity 2 Get ready A. Choose the correct word or phrase to complete the dialogue Then listen and check This film is boring I don't want to watch the end Neither do I Hey, do you want to watch Mystery Tour? I don't know. What's it about? It's a new program about scientists who travel around the world and study mysterious places like the Bermuda Triangle. Oh, I've heard about that. My friend at school said it was really good. Oops. Wait a minute, Kevin. It's not on until 9 o'clock. Your mum told you to be in bed by 8.30, didn't she? That's during the week. On Saturdays, I'm allowed to stay up until 9.30. Oh, lucky you. You can watch it then. Mystery Tour is scary, isn't it? No, it isn't really scary. It's made for people that like science. You're good at science, aren't you? Yes, I am. Hey, do you know Dark Corners? Dark Corners? Now that's a scary programme. It was my favourite programme, but it was dropped last month. Probably because it was too scary. Exam Preparation, Unit 7 to 9 Pupils Book, page 164 Listen and look at the picture. There is one example. Hello, Holly. Would you like to colour in this picture? Yes, please. Those are archaeologists, aren't they? Yes, they are. What would you like to colour first? Well, a statue, I think. Fine. Would you like to colour the bigger statue on the right? OK, I'll colour it grey. Can you see the grey statue? This is an example. Now you listen and colour and write and draw. 1. What shall I colour now? Can you see the two women in the group? Yes. One woman is holding a bottle of water and the other is wearing a big hat. Would you like to colour the hat purple? Yes. That's a good idea. I'll do that now. 2. Can you see the map that the man is looking at? Yes. 
It's on the ground. That's right. Shall I colour it? No, write the word map on it. OK, I'm doing that now. Three. Would you like to draw something now? Yes, that would be nice. OK, can you see the pyramid? Yes, it's very big. Well, can you draw another one next to it, but a bit smaller? OK, that's easy. And can you make it brown? Fine. Four. Shall I draw something else? No, why don't you colour something? Look at the two cars that are coming over the sand. Can you see them? Yes. Shall I colour them both? Just colour one of them. Colour the one in front green. OK, I'll do that. Five. Last thing now, there's an umbrella in the sand. They need that because it's very hot there. Yes, I agree. Shall I colour the umbrella red? Yes, that's a good idea. OK, that's a nice picture now. Activity book, page 146. Young Learners English Practice Flyers. Listening. A. Listen and draw lines. There is one example. Hello, Emma. Gosh, I haven't seen you for such a long time. I know, Vicky. I can't believe it's been 20 years since we were at school. It's so wonderful to see you. You too. One of our classmates told me you've got a lot of children now. Yes, I've got six. Can you believe it? What are they like? Well, my eldest daughter, Katie, plays chess a lot. She's been playing it since she was little. She's really very good at it. Can you see the line? This is an example. Now you listen and draw lines. My daughter Bella is into music. She's been playing the piano since she was three years old. Oh, really? Yes, and my son Robert likes music a lot too. He's been playing the violin for five years now. That's wonderful. Do any of your other children like the arts? Well, my son Harry wants to be a writer when he grows up. He loves writing stories, but sometimes he spends too much time writing and not enough time doing his homework. Ah, oh, some children are like that. Yes. My youngest daughter, Sarah, loves science. She's been working on a new science project for the last week or so. Wonderful. So that's Katie, Bella, Robert... And Harry and Sarah. Have you got any other children? Yes, one more. My son David. He's the active one of the group. What does he like doing? He likes mountain climbing. He goes all the time with my husband. In fact, he's getting ready to go mountain climbing today. That sounds like fun. And good exercise too. It sounds like all your children are very talented. That's really wonderful, Emma. Thanks, Vicky. I'm very proud of them. Now, listen again. Page 1, Activity Book, page 147. Young Learners, English Practice Flyers. Listening. B. Listen and write. There is one example. Hello and welcome to our show. It's great to be here. I'd like to ask you a few questions about your career as a football player. My career as a football player? Certainly. OK, let's get started. Can you see the answer? Now you listen and write. My first question is about your early days. How long have you been playing football? I started playing when I was 12. And you're 24 now. So you've been playing football for 12 years. That's right. And I hear that your team has got some exciting news about the Olympics. Yes, it's true. We're going to take part in the next Olympics, which is six months from now. In six months? That's not long. How do you feel? Excited, proud, 
scared. What a mix of feelings. What's your goal for the Olympics? We're going for the gold. The gold medal? That's right. If we practice really hard, we'll win it. I'm sure of it. What about the future? Where do you see yourself ten years from now? Ten years? Well, I hope I'll still be playing football. You don't think you'll want to retire before then? Retire? I don't think so. I love this sport. I'll definitely still be playing. Hmm. Finally, what message have you got for young people today? Hmm. Never give up. Oh, that's a great message, to never give up. I think I need to hear that too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed talking to you. Now, listen again. Activity book, page 148. Young learners' English practice flyers. Listening. C. Listen and tick the box. There is one example. Hi, Mary. Hi, Tom. I'm excited about the concert tonight. So am I. We'd better go now. What time does it start? Um, it starts at 7.45, doesn't it? I don't think so. I think it starts at 7.30. Oh, you're right. 7.30. And it's 7 now. We have to hurry or we'll be late. Can you see the tick? Now you listen and tick the box. 1. What subject did Mary choose for her history project? What's your history project about, Mary? Did you choose anything from Europe? No, I didn't. I thought about choosing the Great Sphinx, but decided not to. I think the Egyptians were amazing. You're right, they were. But I recently watched a programme about the Statue of Liberty and thought, wow! Did you know the Statue of Liberty was designed by the same man that designed the Eiffel Tower? Yes, it was a gift from France to the United States, wasn't it? Exactly. It's got such an interesting history, so that's why I chose it. 2. What did Tom buy? Hi, Tom. What's that? It's a new CD. I just bought it for my collection. Oh, really? Yes. It's the soundtrack to that film called Goodbye Forever. Oh, I saw that film and read the book. They were both great. 3. Which country would Bill like to visit? Are you ready to start our homework? Yes. So, the first question is, would you like to visit Mexico, Brazil or Peru? I want to visit all of them. I've got family in Mexico, so maybe I would start there first. Wait, that's not the question. Which country would you like to visit? Do you mean I have to choose one? Yes, you do. Oh, well, in that case, I think I'd have to choose Peru, because I've always wanted to see Machu Picchu. 4. What homework is Katie going to do tonight? How's your art assignment going, Katie? I finished. I painted a view of London. Have you started your research for the science project yet? No, I haven't. I haven't started mine either. I'm going to revise for my maths test tonight. Then tomorrow, I'll work on the science project. 5. Which structure is Emma learning about? I'm studying history at the moment. Have you ever heard of the Temple of Kukul Khan? No, I haven't. It's a famous pyramid in Mexico. It's also known as El Castillo. What does El Castillo mean? Does it mean palace? El Castillo is Spanish. It means castle. If it's a pyramid, why is it called El Castillo? 
because El Castillo is large and important, like a castle. Now, listen again.